Hey everyone, it's Curly Hero, and welcome back to Prince of Tennis 2005 Crystal Drive. So, I've uh, ruined a lot of my old traditions with the last two episodes. Uh, as I mentioned last time, usually what I try and do is give you a little bit of a teaser for the next episode uh, when they, you know, uh, sort of square off in the beginning and you see the two players that are going to face off. Uh, I try to give you like a little sneak preview of who I'm going to face off next time by only letting the audio play uh, when the character comes in to introduce themselves but not letting you see who it is. Uh, last time I accidentally pressed the button way too fast and we automatically went to the next screen so you already knew that I was playing Kikimaru Eji here uh, and then I, I didn't even get to start the episode normally because uh, usually what I have to do at the beginning of the episode oof, is uh, try and sync the audio with the video. Uh, so a lot of YouTubers, they do it a lot of different ways. What I do is I'll go into the menu for whatever game it is. And I'll just... Um, as I'm pressing buttons, uh, I'll go and say up, down, up, down, left, right. Usually it's just up, down. Most games will give me left, right. Or they would usually just give me left or right or up and down. Uh, in the menus, they usually don't give me both. Uh, but that's usually what I'll do. And then, that way when I'm editing the video, I can match up my voice and the motion in the game that's going up or down, left or right or whatever. And then the video is that way synced. So when I say something, so if I'm not like, let's say I hit the ball here, and I'm like, wow, I hit the ball, you don't hear it like five seconds later, you know? Something like that. So I had to like do some weird thing where I just, I, I created a, a temporary save and went back to the beginning of the game to get to the menu, then sync it up, then go back to the... It was a mess. I've been a mess. <laughs> Made a mess of this entire sequence. The sequence that used to be... Ooh, get wrecked. Uh, this entire sequence that was like clockwork for me back in the day. Um, you know, recording these... Uh, types of videos were super easy for me. Like, I used to be able to pump out Prince of Tennis videos, like, with my eyes closed. Like, there were other videos that gave me a lot of trouble and whatnot, and I had to, like, prepare beforehand, and I did have to do that with Prince of Tennis to an extent, but nowhere near as much. And, you know, it is kind of, uh... It's like, it makes sense. <laughs> so I've been recording this the longest out of anything, right? Especially right now. Um... Because, like, even though I've played a lot of, like, for example, the Yu-Gi-Oh! games on the GBA and stuff, um, a lot of those are different, so I have to, like, prepare for them differently. It's not like I've been playing Eternal Duel's Soul for the last five or six years or however long it's been. Um, so, yeah, it's been a little different every single time for those. Where this has been generally the same, which, even that is a bit of a lie because the format has changed quite a lot. Like before, even when I started, oh man, I used to have a different editor. I just remembered that. Uh, not in like a person that edits. <laughs> I am the only person that edits my videos, unfortunately. So I don't mean like an editor as a person. What I mean is uh, video editor, like the program. I used to think it was called Lightworks or... Uh, I don't remember the name of it, but it was like... It had light in the name and like it had an icon of a shark. I used to use it because like it was supposed to be free. Um, and it was like pretty fancy because it did like some of the stuff that you would get from like Sony Vegas or um, Adobe Premiere, I think is a video editor one. Uh, so that kind of stuff was pretty cool. But like they really some weird update where specifically for like the way I was recording my videos, the sound files just became really weird and horrible. And I just wasn't able to use any of them. So I had to just stop using that. And then ever since then, I jumped over onto Camtasia, and I've been using that um, for my entire YouTube career. Uh, I did try Premiere out for some point uh, for like the Pokemon Let's Go Eevee playthrough I did. Uh, I did a couple of episodes of that on Premiere, and like the openings and stuff like that, I did that on Premiere, and the... Uh, I might have done the endings, actually, in the outros, I should say, in Camtasia, because I was probably easier, but I don't remember. But in any case, um, I did used to have, like, a completely different format. Like, I would show you the bottom screen, really small, on the side, and then, like, I, I, I changed up the format quite a lot for it. And then I'm just kind of stuck with the format that I have now uh, for quite a bit. 
Ah, uh, because it's the easiest and it's the most comfortable. Like, I even used to, like, display the character's stats and whatnot, but I, I realized that that really wasn't that big of a deal. I just made it more work than it needed to be. But I feel like this format is a lot easier where I kind of just show you the fucking game, <laughs> which is all that really matters. It's just the game, my commentary, and I even crop out the um, gauges on the left of the screen. So you literally just see the game. Um, so that allows it to be a more of like a... Uh, I don't know what to call it. Uh, more of an immersive experience, I guess. You don't have to see like video game... <laughs> bars and stuff, it's just a tennis match, and it's just me talking about tennis. Um, but, speaking of tennis, <laughs> uh, now that I've gotten all of that out of the way, I don't know, I've just had a lot of, like, uh, behind the stage stuff to, like, get off my chest, I guess, uh, just because of, like, how this video started in the last video, and since I took a long hiatus from this, I spent, like, two episodes talking about that. I've been wanting to talk about, specifically, I'm probably gonna end up getting it into a more next episode, uh, sort of the tennis that I actually played during my hiatus. So as I had mentioned, I think two episodes ago, or two videos ago, uh, I did go to Florida and I was playing tennis in the National Tennis Center that they have there. And that place is amazing. I know a lot of people, I think that the New York Center is really cool and it probably is um, if you're like a really good tennis player. But since I, like, suck and stuff, generally, um, the experience isn't as great for me. Um, you know, they play the US Open here and all that stuff, and, uh, that's, like, one of the Grand Slams, whereas, like, the Florida Open and stuff like that, and, uh, they do some of the Davis Cups down there, too. Like, that one, that stuff, they don't, people don't really care about that, because they're minor leagues. But, like, the, the... I was going to say the stadium. The center itself over there is amazing. And they have so many great coaches and tools and everything. Uh, that I actually felt like I actually learned tennis this time around. Um, and then the funny thing is it's just my usual complaint with like when I start comparing New York and Florida. My usual complaint about it all is that Florida is way more spread out. And also has way less people. Because you know New York there's like... 8 million people, right? <laughs> in this tiny... New York City has like a billion people just on this tiny little island, right? So, uh, for example, I voted for the first time in Florida, and it was like after 6 or something, I drove and I'm from work, and I got to the voting center, and there was like just the smallest line. Whereas like if I were to do that in New York, I would have probably had to wait a line outside the door to try and do something as simple as that, right? Um, but in general, just many things, like, there were just not as many people crowded, like, uh, we have a store called Marshall's, <laughs> where if you go here in New York, and you try to go to it, uh, it's usually super crowded, the lines are ridiculously long, and you usually cannot get anything <laughs> quickly, whereas in Florida, I was easily able to walk in, get something, put it on, try it on, get out, be out in like 10, 15 minutes. It's ridiculous. So when I went to the actual tennis center, I was able to get a lot more sort of one-on-one um, -on -one coaching with a lot of the coaches there, which was amazing and it really helped me out a lot. Uh, whereas like, you know, in Florida, a lot of the classes were like not always jam-packed. Whereas in New York, you're quite lucky to get into your classes because they're always full to the brim. Uh, so the coaches just kind of don't really care. And ironically, I feel like most of the coaches, whenever I have a coach here in New York, I'm always it's always me and like five other women, which I have no problem with playing against women. But the coaches are always focusing on the women <laughs> and never really giving a shit about me when it comes to actually coaching. And it annoys the hell out of me. But in any case, we'll talk about more of that next time. Take care of yourself.